Hi, this is John, and I'm using YouTube to once again give a uh, reflection uh, for part of a discussion on uh, ethics. So here's some things I learned this week. Uh, stakeholders in my organization, Rider University, are students, teachers, alumni, parents, administrators, people who live in the surrounding area, uh, people who we interact with all over the world, people in nearby cities, people in faraway cities, businesses who hire our students, organizations who work with us and our stakeholders, and so on. It's important to consider each of our stakeholders in the ethical reasoning process because without this stakeholder analysis, it becomes very easy to become ethically flawed in making a decision. Some causes of stress include an increased workload, information overload, badly managed change, increased speed of change, bad leadership, bad followership, followership, and bad management. Workplace stress can be managed by incorporating organizational development programs that focus on negating and lessening stressors, emotional intelligence training, improving communication and feedback channels, and developing strong organizational support relationships. Uh, part of our discussion was about specific kinds of stress. Andrea said, For her occupation as an athletic trainer, some stressors included long hours, injury prevention management, or emergency situations, conflicting demands, wants and needs, travel, and salary. I personally, John, was thinking more generally, but this is an interesting dimension that Andrea raised. The stressors that occur according to specific kinds of work. Technology professionals' specific stressors might include keep, keeping up with new technologies, um, defending competing technologies to various stakeholders. In other words, I think this is a great technology. Somebody else thinks there's a better technology, and we have to uh, stress out over which one is better. Um, following or countering managerial leads that you disagree with technically. Security. Security, 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 uh, service downtime, the threat of outsourcing, and so on. Luckily, in my work, I seldom have to be concerned with entry prevention. Uh, I'm not going to get hurt working on the server, typically. And Andrea probably does not care a whit about wireless security breaches in her work. As far as uh, leadership styles, as I think back to different leaders I've had, the ones I've liked best were the ones who pushed me to learn and grow and to escape my existing boundaries in small ways every day. I want to follow those leaders. I've also had leaders who really don't make an effort one way or another to help you to develop yourself. Find your voice or share a vision. That's sad, but that's manageable. The worst I've found is when someone actively holds you down or steps on your neck for fear that you're moving too far too fast. If you've ever experienced this, you know how frustrating it can be. And uh, we had another discussion that talked about in-groups and out-groups. And I said, it sounds like Tim is talking about what Daft calls in-groups and out-groups in the leadership experience by uh, Daft, one of my favorite writers. Uh, in-groups are the clicks, circles, and clutches that can be chosen by leaders or freely formed amongst peers and coworkers. Out-groups are defined by the exclusion from a particular in-group. In other words, a leader makes an in-group, and the people who are not in that in-group are part of the out-group. Uh, many of these groups can exist in a single organization, but very commonly the place where problems arise is where a leader or leaders will choose to confide in a select few while excluding others from vital information, communications, development, opportunity, or even basic, basic acceptance, uh, expecting that somehow the information will trickle down when necessary, magically. Uh, some leaders may use this as an extrinsic reward for high performers as a way to get them to continue good performance. Jack Welch comes to mind with his 10, 20, 30 thing, uh, 10, 20, 70 thing. The problem here is that the excluded workers may compound their exclusion by bad performance, which may reinforce their bad performance, entering a recursive negative cycle for those in the out group. In other words, I can't win and I can't do anything to improve my situation, so what am I going to do? Um, Ethically, it's bad on many fronts. From a business perspective, there's little benefit to in-grouping. 
and lots of ill will, superiority issues, wall building, and other negative byproducts that may come of it. It benefits only the fewest of the few in terms of stakeholders. In-grouping is almost by definition focusing on one or two stakeholders and creating a microcosm where ethics starts and ends with the in-group. I've been in both in-groups and out-groups, and in my opinion, neither one of them is very much fun, and both of them make it harder to get work done in cross-group situations. I had a great time this week discussing with my friends in LEAD uh, 560, and I just wanted to say thanks. Have a good one.